Hey you guys, welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. Today I will be continuing with the digital signatures and the different basic parts of a, of a cryptology or cryptography. So before I proceed, in our random oracle model we can model a digital signature algorithm as well and that can act as a random function that reduces any input message to a one-way hash value of fixed length followed by a special kind of cipher block or in which the elf will perform the operation in one direction known as signature for only one principle while in the other direction it will perform a verification of anybody. So starting off with the uh, basic parts of there are four basic parts in a cryptography so uh, the first one is the plain text it is an unscrambled information to be transmitted and it could be a simpler text document a credit card number a password, a bank account number or sensitive information such as payroll data, personal information or personal information or secret formula being transmitted between organizations. The second part is the ciphertext. A ciphertext represents a plain text rendered <laughs> inintelligible by the application of a mathematical algorithm. Ciphertext is the encrypted plain text that is transmitted to the receiver. After that we have the cryptographic algorithm that's a mathematical formula which is used to scramble the plain text to yield the ciphertext. Converting plain text to ciphertext using the cryptography algorithm is called as encryption, and converting the ciphertext back to plain text using the same cryptographic algorithm is called as the decryption. After that, we have the final part that is the key. Mathematical value or formula or process that determines how a plain text message is encrypted or decrypted. The key is the only way to decipher the, the scrambled information. And yep, these are the uh, four parts of actually uh, the actual cryptography and how it looks like. So, and finally, we come to the advantages and disadvantages of cryptography. So, even though public key cryptography is the accepted standard, it's not foolproof. For this reason, it has not completely replaced um, symmetric cryptography. So there are some advantages and disadvantages of it. The advantages being that the biggest advantage of public key cryptography is that the secure nature of the private key. In fact, it never needs to be transmitted or revealed to anyone. It enables the use of digital signatures and digital timestamps as well, which is as of now the very uh, secure technique to signature authorization. So I will look into digital timestamps and digital signatures in a moment. The disadvantages are that transmission time for documents encrypted using public key cryptography and are significantly slower than the symmetric cryptography. In fact, transmission of very large documents is prohibitive. And the another part is that the key sizes uh, must be significantly larger than symmetric uh, cryptography to achieve the same level of protection. And the final con would be that the public key cryptography is susceptible to impersonation attacks. So yeah, no one can be held responsible for that though. So let me explain this to you with an example. The ABC company maintains a payroll information for a variety of organizations. The payroll information is frequently transmitted over the internet from uh, participating companies. So for security reasons, the ABC company conducts all of its internet transactions using public key cryptography. The company owns both public and a private key encryption. The public key is made available to all participating organizations and in fact is openly available to anyone who wants to download it from the ABC website. The private key is kept secure in bank vault at let's say ABC headquarters. So when the XYZ company wants to transmit its payroll data to the ABC company, it first encrypts the data using the ABC company's public key once it is encrypted. The scrambled payroll data is transmitted securely over the internet to the ABC company's processing department. If the information is intercepted along the way, all the interceptors will see uh, is scrambled information and nothing else. Even if the public key uh, which is very possible, uh, they will uh, not be able to unscramble the information. So the only private key can do that. Once the information is received by ABC, the private key is used to unscramble the information allowing the processing document to process the payroll. Using symmetric cryptography, uh, the ABC company would have to deliver through some secure means uh, such as a courier 
a copy of its one and only private key. Since the same key is used to both encrypt and decrypt the information, both sender and receiver must have a copy. So if XYZ is a new client for ABC, ABC must first send a copy of the secret key so that XYZ can encrypt its payload information and transmit it to ABC. ABC using the same key decrypts the XYZ information and processes the payroll data. Since a system is only as strong as it's the weakest link, key security during transmission becomes an important or extremely important for XYZ as encrypting the data. As mentioned earlier, public key cryptography lends itself to a new technology called as digital signatures. Digital signatures involve uh, a reversing of the normal public private encryption decryption process. So here is an example that demonstrates its use. Uh, I'll give you one more example for that. Let's say uh, Mary wants to, uh, okay, I had, okay. Let's say for example, Mary wants to send the ABC company a request for a special document. Before the ABC company can send that document, they must be assured that the requester is actually Mary and not some person impersonating her. So a digital signature can verify Mary's validity to ABC in uh, such a way. Mary first encrypts her name using her private key. She then encrypts the request along with the encrypted name using the ABC company's well-known public key. When the ABC company receives the message, it decrypts the request using its private key and then decrypts the signature using Mary's well-publicized public key. If the name uh, decrypts successfully, then it was be Mary's signature since she is the only one who could have the encrypted, uh, who could have encrypted it with her secret private key. The request can be uh, safely processed. Digital signatures are gaining popularity in many internet transactions involving signature verification such as contracts and other legal negotiations as well as code documents. Recent uh, enhancements to digital signatures include such as digital timestamps. Digital timestamps apply uh, when a uh, criteria to a digital signature by attaching a widely publicized document or summary number to the signature. The summary number is only produced at, given, at some given point of time, which is essentially linking the signature to a certain date or time. It's an especially effective technology since it, since it doesn't rely on the security of keys. But there are several other ways as to how we can go ahead and protect your key. One of them is that uh, you need to be smart so that any other person who is actually going ahead and using these stuff uh, do not know what you're exactly doing. because. If someone has an idea that uh, there is some or the other way to go ahead and get inside your uh, private space, then it will be very hard for uh, any of them to go ahead and actually gain access to your organization. So yeah, that would be it for this tutorial and uh, that's how crypt analysis, uh, encryption and detection attack works. So that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we'll be taking a look at session hijacking and cookie stealing.